Hi everyone, I'm Luke Hector and you're watching The Broken Meeple. This is a YouTube channel about board games where I give reviews, top tens and my honest opinions regardless of the consequences. We'll get on with the show in just a minute, but first a quick word from my sponsor. As a fellow gamer, you'll understand this is unacceptable. The solution? Head down to my new sponsor, kiender.co.uk. Kiender stocks many of the hot new releases as well as some old hidden gems. Free delivery on orders over £30, further discounts on bulk purchases, and even 5% of your spending refunded back to you as points to be used for further discounts down the line. If you use the referral link in the description below and sign up for a new account, you'll get 5% discount on your first order over £60. So let's make gaps in your collection a thing of the past. Get down to Kiender and start saving today. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. Get on with it. So on today's show, we're taking a look at Eleven, the new football manager board game from Portal. And the weather outside is windy and gusty like you wouldn't believe. So if you hear that, I apologize. But I'm just going to preface one thing here that's probably going to be more controversial than anything I mentioned in this review. I don't like football. You mother at most, I'll do a five-a-side kickabout for charity or something with work colleagues and that, but other than that, I hate Premiership football. I don't care about supporting one of the Man United or Arsenal teams or something. They're all overpaid, you know, overpaid sportsmen who just get to kick a ball around for 90 minutes every now and again and get paid millions of pounds, whatever. I got, I got no respect for the whole football thing, especially when most of it is amateur dramatics and people thinking that they can, like, you know, cheat their way out of a game or something. It's just like, ugh, I don't like Premiership football. And exactly how many times did he fall out of the window? So why the hell am I reviewing a board game based on it? I have no idea. Well, you know what? I like different themes. And the idea of running a football club sounds interesting. It's different. It's not, it's, it's been done in some smaller games, but you don't hear about many of them. There's a little one called Super Club I keep hearing mentioned, but I've never heard of it. I think it was a like a few years old Kickstarter or something, but you know, a big main game by a big publisher to do with football managing, that's different. And I'm always up for different themes and running a club is probably more interesting to me than like playing football itself. But onto the game itself. So in 11, you are managing your own club and you've got your own match sheet. You've got your player board where your directors and staff will go and you've got your stadium where you'll build upgrades and various things. But what it essentially boils down to is a six round game, which is done over the space of five days in each round. So it's basically the week. You have three action phases, Tuesday to Thursday, the match day, which is Friday, and the board meeting day, which is Monday. So on Monday, you get production based on your various stat markers that you have on here. But mainly, you will get to use your board of directors. So the board of directors are a bunch of cards you pre-select at the start of the game. You roll a die and the... A uh, board meeting card that comes out will essentially have a various effects on it, yellow, blue and red. You see what die results you rolled and depending on which of the colours your directors want to go for is the outcome you do. And then in, in this game, if you ever want to mitigate die rolls, you have to spend fan points, you know, fan counters in order to do it. But that's a very simplistic board, like, you know, start of the round. Then you go into the action phases and there'll be cards laid out with, you know, different staff members that you can hire to go into your place and give you like special abilities and more actions. You can grab sponsors, which are a smorgasbord of various brand names that have been made up, I think, by Portal. There's a few sort of joke ones in here based on like certain board games. But, you know, World's Greenest Grass or so and stuff like that. Portal Cookies, Probably Pies, Fly Fair, Frank's Fruit, Cat Food Imperium. It's like, there's a lot of cool ones in here. But you can basically use these to get more money and various other special effects. But, of course, you're going to need players. So you've got a mixture of players that you can hire. These little cards here with different stats, different abilities. But they can also be trained to be even better at their jobs. And some of these may even include... include sorry, youngsters, which are basically blank faces for the while until you train them up and then they'll be, well, who knows? You don't know what the youngster is going to be. That's the idea. You train up the youngster. They got no skill to begin with, but then eventually they become a powerhouse, like the next future, you know, Ronaldo or something. I don't know. I really don't know football players. So don't quote me on any of this stuff. Then you get to Friday with the match. The match has you going up against one of the other teams in the division. Now, this deck is huge because it covers all the div teams in every division with multiple versions of each one. But before the game starts, you'll effectively have six of these for the game based on what division you're doing. So, for example, I've got Division 1 here, Port East. It has a little scout report, which gives you a little bit of a blurb on what they do as well as their formation. And then on the back, it has the actual formation you do. 
you will then use your match board to place your various jerseys all over it in the various different sections and zones in order to prepare for the match. You're kind of guessing what the opponent's going to do in terms of their attacking and defending forces, shields and footballs. And so what happens is once you've prepared, you've played your tactic cards and various other things, you're like, okay, I'm sorted for the match. You then flip over the respective scout report, and then based on where your jerseys are on this grid, you assess in pairs whether you are able to get your shots past those pairs. So basically, if it's a football, it's attacking. If it's a defense, it's defending. They've got strength values. You compare the strengths, highest goes through. If it's attacking, it will score a goal. If it's defending, it blocks it, and so on and so forth. Most of the players work in a similar fashion. The goalkeeper has one or two extra rules about saving, but that's essentially the deal. Once you've assessed the five different zones, both wings and the three central ones, you check to see who's won the match, you roll a die on some consequences to see if you get injuries or some extra strength or maybe somebody gets trained up in the, in the match, and then you rinse repeat for another five rounds. You do another board meeting and then you get more stadium uh, bonuses, you get more players, you find more staff, you, know, you get more sponsors, you do whatever it is you need to do, but you've only got the free actions plus any bonus ones that you might pay for with specific markers. So actions are quite tight. And then of course you've got to play another five matches. At the end of all those matches, you find out by our victory points from stuff you've built, players you've hired, players that have uh, gone into matches and scored goals, as well as your final league position in the table compared to all the other teams, Total up the points, and of course, the one with the most. Of course! So I get a preface right now, I am coming into this solely as a solo player, right? That I am, this is a solo review. I'm just gonna explain why now. Multiplayer is pointless. This is a multiplayer solitaire game in every definition of the word. The only thing that another player does to you is you'll have a display of the staff cards, of the players, and of the sponsors, okay? And you can only choose from certain ones in the display. They rinse, they rinse and repeat. So if one gets taken, they slide down, another one comes out. Other players might take the card you want. That's literally it. That is all the multiplayer is. All the matches are simultaneous and everybody plays their own match. The board meeting, simultaneous. Everybody rolls their own die, has their own board directors and decides what it is they want to do. The match consequences are their beef. You know, the stadium is their beef. You can't do anything with the other players. So this game is entirely pretty much multiplayer solitaire or a solo game. So if you're thinking of buying this to play with your three or four player group, I honestly don't particularly recommend that. This is a solo game. It felt like a solo game when I played it multiplayer. And it's just like, yeah, you know what? Solo all the way. So you know, with that said, going forward, let's talk about components rise. Now, this insert is not in the game, okay? I'll, I've forgotten the name, I think it's New Druco or something, but basically they were selling these at Essen, it's an MDF insert, I'll put the name on the screen, if I can find a web link I'll let you know, but basically this was an MDF insert that I bought at the time to house the card. And it does a pretty good job of actually containing everything in a nice neat setup in the main box. The only downside is if you want to mix and match the various sponsors and director cards, the cubby holds don't allow for that very easily. So you've got to split them across multiple compartments. It kind of assumes that you're going to separate all the expansion stuff every game, which is kind of stupid. But, you know, it's doing well for me. So that is what these are. But the rest of the components are all portal. And to be honest, they're fine, actually. This is the retail copy of the game. And I don't know what all the deluxe Kickstarter stuff is meant to be or what was on Game Found. I'm not interested. This is the retail copy, okay? The cards... Pretty decent. They're stiff cards. I don't think you ever need to sleeve these. I think these are pretty sturdy cards. They're not going to scuff. They're very. They're fairly thick card stock. You know, good quality. You know, these are not going to be a problem to leave unsleeved. I quite like the player mats as well. I mean, yeah, they are, you know, flimsy in in that sense. But I like the feel of them. They've got this kind of glossy, almost linen finish uh, cover on them, with slightly different feel for where you would actually put tiles so that they stick a little bit more. And honestly, I quite like this. I mean, it just feels nice. Yes, I would like an actual board if it, you know, of all things considered. But if it keeps the price down, you know what? I'd settle for this. These don't slide around on the table, especially not on something like this surface. And you know, the artwork is you know, decent enough. It certainly portrays that theme of it being a football manager and the rest of the game kind of does that as well, but more on that in a minute. And honestly, the other other ideas, I mean, you've got, you know, pretty thick cardboard, sorry, cardboard, sorry, thick wooden tokens for the various resources. I mean, would you like proper looking resources? Yes, but honestly, I'll take thick wooden counters as a side thing. 
tiles. Tiles for the stadium increases, they're fine. You've got a bunch more tokens that you can have in the backs, and yeah, honestly, I'm fine with the component quality in this. There was nothing in here that I felt detracted from the experience. I've heard reports of some issues with some of the game found stuff, but that's not my concern. My concern is what could you buy in the box if you went to the shop and bought it direct? And honestly, I think the stuff you get in the retail box is pretty comprehensive. The theme does come out quite strong. Yes, you're just mainly acquiring cards and doing a whole push your luck thing with the matches and that. But if you want to play this thinking this is going to be like Football Manager, it's not far off, honestly. You've got the teams doing what they do. You've got other teams winning and drawing and losing matches at random, more on that later, in the tournament. You've got unexpected consequences. You've got the board directors having to come up with some quandary, you know, like, you know, are we going to, like, sponsor this or not? And you're hoping to not have to spend all your money. Uh, are you going to get more players? Are you going to get more staff? That theme came out quite strong, and for someone like me who's not even interested in football to the most extent, that's pretty impressive. Now we're starting to get into mixed bag opinions because that was all good up to that point. However, firstly the rulebook. The rulebook is not as bad as Portal Games rulebooks have been in the past. It's not, it's decent enough. It's big and thick, yes, but most of it is because there's a lot of pictures in here and the text is relatively big. You know, they're not wasting the space on just like bland uh, white space and text. There's a lot going on here. I mean, there's tons of pages just for the setup, which is a... Uh, Quite a lengthy setup, it must be said. But the issues with the rulebook are mainly to do with the ordering and the matches. I found that this book was pretty useful from a player aid perspective. I found it was very good at teaching me what to do with the various cards and what to do in the, the board director's phase and the action phases. But they then like put these additional rules at the very end of the book after you've done end of the game. And these are important additional rules like maintenance that you have to pay every round, uh, injuries, objective cards, match effects. These things are kind of important stuff. Why are they here in a bit? Tactic cards even. You need to know how tactic cards work before the match. Why is it in additional rules? These things should have just, there shouldn't be an additional rules section. This should be in the bulk of the main rule book. But on top of that, the matches, as much as they do do a, a good job of, well, sorry, a good attempt of trying to explain how the matches work, I did find that that was a little bit tricky to get my head around because it's not explained as well as it could have been and you certainly are going to have problems with this game if you're left and right to have problems because you are playing like forwards, midfield and back. Your scout report goes here, right? And it's obviously from the same perspective but you have to like ascertain these pairs based on their right wing attacking your left wing because obviously it's... It, you know, obviously my, my perspective is different from the opponent's perspective, but when you try to translate that to a board game, it gets a little bit weird. You're thinking, ah, oh, that's blocking that and that's blocking that. Oh, wait, hang on, I'm supposed to be assessing that zone against that zone, all right, and that zone against that zone. It's like, Ugh. just takes a little bit extra to kind of go, hmm, you know. So the, the matches I found to not be quite as streamlined as I would like, and they're going to take you a bit longer to get used to. In fact, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me I was playing them wrong at one point. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things that's like, ugh, could have been better, but they have seen much worse rule books, so honestly, it's not that bad. Overall, I would rate it a C plus. Okay? Not great. But here's one big problem I have, and this is not this is, this is going to be exacerbated if you play this multiplayer. This is another reason why this is a solo game and nothing else. The luck factor in this game is a bit much. This game does outstay its welcome, I think, with six rounds. Every time I've played this, whether it's multiplayer or, well, actually, especially multiplayer, but when I've played it solo, it's, I feel like when I get to the end of round four, I feel like I'm done. You've already had a decent amount of time in the game because you're planning what you're going to do with those free actions. It's not like you can just go through the round in five minutes and do well because it's not going to happen. And the matches usually take a bit to get through. But by the time I get to round five and six, I feel like I'm done. So five and six, just like, ah, it feels bolted on. I wish it was just a little bit shorter and a bit more condensed. Not to mention that it's very rinse repeat. Every round plays out exactly the same. The only difference is that you will have slightly better players, some bigger stats, well maybe, I don't know, it depends how badly you did earlier, but uh, you know, you're gonna have a bit more stuff built. 
which means that the turns are going to take a bit longer because you've got more stuff to play with. But again, it's rinse repeat. There's no sense of a real crescendo in this game. It's not like when you get to the match six, it's like, right, this is the final against the best team ever or anything. It's like, well, no, it's another team out of the random selection of six and it will be exactly the same as before. It's just your players are hopefully a little bit better. You know, there's not a lot of differentiation with each round. And so by the time I get to round four, I'm kind of done. But the luck factor really hurts because there are some aspects of luck in this game, which you can argue are quite thematic, that they work for the game. But, uh, yes, they're thematic, but mechanically, I don't think they work. The board of directors meetings, these cards, it's a cool idea, and I like the concept, but some of these effects are pretty bad, and some of these are particularly good. So there is definitely a swing in how good and bad they are. Somebody rolling, like, a good one versus somebody who rolls a bad one has a massive leg up, and it's purely luck. Yeah, if you've got the red tokens to mitigate it, possibly, but that just allows you to re-roll the die. I don't know if you know my dice luck, but I can re-roll the die a amount of times and still get bad results if I try. So it's not like you spend the marker and adjust the die value by one or two, because that would actually probably work better. But the fact you have to re-roll it just means it's more luck at the end of the day. And it's pretty punishing to sort of go, right, well, I just had to spend two money because of this board meeting, but oh, you got to train an entire player. It's a bit of a leg up, all based on a die roll. In solo mode, you put up with it. In multiplayer mode, it hurts a lot. On top of that, what other luck factors you've got? Well, you've got the match itself. These scout reports, yeah, they give you a little report on them. Like, I mean, you know, they are the current champion of the lead. They rarely score, but almost never lose goals either. They're motivated and they press on both wings. They play 4-4-2. Okay, how do I interpret that? Now, the last bit, they press on both wings. Okay, so I expect the wings to have a lot of players or a lot of strength. And eh, lo and behold, there's a strength five player here, a strength three defender and a strength three there. But there's also strength fours at the back. There's also a strength three at the front. It, it, a lot of these scout reports are pretty vague. You don't feel like you've, like, oh yeah, I've sussed out their team. Right, this is the perfect layout. I'm going to do it. It's push your luck at the end of the day. And you sometimes feel that you lost a match purely because you got unlucky. Like, I'll put a player on left wing or right wing. I don't know. It's the same player. It's left wing or right wing. There's nothing in the scout report about it. All right, I'll put it on the left. And then you find the left has got a massive defender and it's screwed. Whereas if you put it on the right, you would have got lucky and scored a goal. And again, you can argue that football is a bit like that when you watch it being played. But in a board game, in a Euro game, that's this long. It says 90 minutes on the box. Good, yeah, good luck with that. You know, you're talking two hours plus. It's... I don't know, that, that does hurt a bit. And bear in mind, this is something that wants you to get victory points or achieve certain scenarios. So something like that happening, which just screws you over in a long game, does get a little bit grating. And then you've got the match consequences at the end. Win, draw, or lose. You roll a six-sided die and you see what happens. You could win every single game in the league and you could still roll bad enough to injure all your players. And getting rid of injuries is not easy or cheap. Whereas you could lose every single game and still get like extra strength added to your players for the future. It, it's another random element. And as much as you might think, well, don't, what if you just get a bunch of these red counters? The red counters also go on your ad stands and provide revenue for people coming to your club. And if you don't get that revenue, good luck paying your maintenance because money is tight. You don't have a lot of money to go around and it even wants you to upgrade your office in this game, which is just generic track upgrade for victory points. But I'm like, yeah, I'm glad you've got all the money in the world. I don't know where everybody else is getting all the money in the world to upgrade their office. I mean, you could probably upgrade your office if you don't mind your stadium being consisting of nothing interesting or important. But yeah, the money is quite tight. I want my red counters for that, not for die rolls. And if somebody isn't spending them on die rolls, they're getting more money, rich get richer. You see where I'm going with this. But the variety is pretty decent. You've got a lot of players. You've got a lot of sponsors. I mean, a ton of sponsors. And yes, this does include a few from the mini expansion, but you would still have quite a fair bit after that. Would have liked a few more board directors. There's not a huge amount of variety in here. There's not a huge amount of different ones, but you know, uh, what it is. There's a decent amount of skull, um, skull, scout report, a skull report, that'd be interesting. <laughs> um, objectives are kind of normal, but where I think this game lacks a lot on variety is the staff. Because, well, ignore this set because this came from an expansion. So, these are your starter ones. This is your deck of staff. 
This is it. That's not a lot of staff. Although, hang on a minute, surely there's more staff than that, Luke. Oh, there is. There's this chunk of staff. But why am I not using it? Because it's free and four player only. If you play this with one or two players, these are all the staff you have. That is purely for three or four players, and they are not particularly varied, um, you know, varied abilities. Mostly it's set collection for victory points, which I don't get thematically how that's supposed to work in the game, in the game of football, but, you know, needs to the must. But that means I'm literally seeing the same staff appear every single game, and they're not that interesting in terms of abilities. So this, for some reason, I mean, you've got all these sponsors, and yet you've only got this many staff. That just seems like a bit of a, a little waste. And the stadium upgrades aren't particularly varied either. I mean, there's two sets here because one's a mini expansion, but in the base set, you just get four generic ones that increase your markers, stands, and uh, and was it and your billboard. That's it. There's not particularly much variety in the stadium upgrades, nor are they by themselves that interesting. So you got good variety in some places and bad in others. But if you are playing just solo, you do at least get some decent scenarios. So if you're multiplayer, you're playing normal rules, but solo, you've got six scenarios. This is double-sided, which much like in the Robinson Crusoe vein, basically touch up the rules, give you new setup changes, new ideas, and gotta admit, not played all six, but they are pretty varied. I mean, you've got one where you're investigating a corrupt club, one where you're in a rubbish team and you've got to try not to get relegated. You've got, uh, you know, friendly matches with uh, trying to get to the highest... Uh, managerial position you've got uh, going up against a rival you've got a guy who's like obsessed with money and having a, like not wasting money on stuff these are pretty varied and as i say this is why i'm reviewing it mostly for a solo perspective because you get these and this is more variety than the multiplayer is this is why superman works alone so recommending 11 kind of depends on how you're going to play this. You need to have your expectations solid. If you're coming into this as a multiplayer experience, I just don't recommend it, honestly. I don't think it's worth it. You could have four players with this massive table hog table, and the other three players do almost nothing to get in your way apart from buy the occasional staff card you wanted. That's literally it. It's not worth it. Solo is the way to play this game. Now, from a solo perspective, is the game still good? Yes and no. There's certainly a good amount of strong theme here. You know, it definitely felt like I was running a football club. That bit is definitely done well, thumbs up. The rulebook could have been better at explaining the matches and ordering certain rules around, but for the most part, it didn't take me too long to get into the game and just get going. And that's pretty impressive from Portal's standpoint there's a decent amount of variety in some of the players that you can have and the different sponsors that you can have but then the variety drops with things like the staff cards being cut in half if you want to play this solo and there not being that many interesting stadium upgrades or you know that many directors to speak of unless you buy some of the other expansions and as I say the expansions are nice to have but I gotta give this rating based on the box that you just buy on its own these are nice additions this is what you're buying up front first the component quality is fine, you know, the cards are decent quality, the wooden counters and that are decent. Yeah, there's no miniatures. Who cares? I'm not interested. What are the game found um, extras and deluxe stuff like? I don't know. Not my concern. I'm on about the review. I'm reviewing a retail copy here. But that luck factor and the length of the game is a big deal. You know, this game is already taking you a good 90 minutes to two hours to play, possibly even solo, because you're not playing it at super speed. You're looking at the different things you can do and going, right, well, let me plan out my whole week. Well, I probably should do that first, but then should I pay to do this card action on top? If I do that, will I have enough money to then buy the stadium upgrade? Maybe, but then I'll have to get a sponsor. Well, which sponsor do I want? And, and certainly it will get your brain ticking, but it means that the game's going to drag on a bit. And the matches take a while to do, assuming that you read the rules right and understand how to do them, because you'll constantly be thinking, all right, hang on, left versus right, and this one goes against this one, and that one goes against that, ah, you know, and not to mention that the game is, I, I didn't mention before, but the game's also pretty hard, you know, this is a hard game to win, this game will punch you in the face on a regular basis, and some of that is just the game being naturally difficult, but some of it is also just the randomness of the consequences of the match, the board director meetings and the match scout reports themselves that feel very disconnected getting in the way. And if this was a 60 minute game tops, probably wouldn't have too much trouble with that. I mean, I play Empires in the North solo and, you know, that's a short game. I'm done in 60 minutes. Is there luck of the draw? Yeah. But it's 60 minutes, it's a shortish game. This is like twice as long that you're going to be investing in setting it up and getting it out, playing through six rounds, which really should have ideally been four rounds. 
and yet you've got to pull up with those aspects. Now, for some of you, you're not going to care. You're going to love that. And if you do, you're going to like this and think this is really, really good, especially with six scenarios in here and potentially more if you buy the extra expansion. For me, though, this is it does things right, but a lot of other things it just kind of falls on. So I think my final rating for this is probably going to be a strong but still capped at 6 out of 10. It's not quite enough to get the endorsement rating at front. I just think that some of the, the, the downsides that are in this game are quite a big deal for me. I don't want to play six rounds of this rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, even though the scenarios are quite cool. But then I also just don't want the luck factor to come in that bad. I mean, the board meetings are fun to read the little blurb, but just to do a die roll and hope for the best? That's not as interesting. The scout reports, again, I feel like I'm literally just going... And I'll just put my jerseys here, 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 and here, and then flip it and then see what happens. Again, that's not as fun either. So it does some stuff right, and I think it's gonna be it's gonna work well with fans, particularly those who are big football fans. But bearing in mind, I'm not a football fan. I'm coming into this as somebody who doesn't like football, but that hasn't influenced my opinion. If anything, I think the fact that I like the theme of this game despite not liking football is quite an achievement. But it's a strong six out of ten. It's just not quite up to that level and you know I feel like maybe a little bit more development time maybe just streamlining certain aspects getting those matches done really well or shortening the game a little bit I think would have just brought it up to that seven and eight category for me because it could have been but it's a six out of ten for me here so that's it for me on this episode if you like what you see then please if you can share the video on social media thumb up the video on YouTube and also on Board Game Geek as well it will pop up there I'd be grateful if you could thumb it up in there as well because it then appears in the hotness but also i'd like you to check out more content on the channel including the latest reviews i've done for starship captains as well as atawa from ui rosenberg so take care and remember regardless of how crummy your club is it's still only a game bye for now